so uh, the neat exam is just on around the corner and i'm getting a couple of requests regarding the biomedical waste management 2016 update so i'll just spend a couple of minutes not taking much of your time we'll just cruise through very quickly and very briefly to cover all the mcqs that somebody can think and ask you upon biomedical waste management guidelines update 2016 so let's go ahead uh, biomedical waste management is under what ministry it is under ministry of forest and environment so it's basically the environment ministry which takes care of the biomedical waste management guidelines we have in uh, we have in india and uh, I think it's a very hype topic and most of us know that just very recently we have divided the whole manage, uh, the whole categories of waste management into only four categories. So there are only four categories for waste management now. So earlier we had like 10 categories. You had uh, different sorts of like anatomical waste, animal waste, microbiological sharp, solid soil, solid uh, tubes and uh, ash and liquid waste and hazardous chemicals and things like that. So anyways, there were like previous time we had 10 categories which are not used now. So what we have classified as into first is yellow category, yellow category, second is red category waste, fourth it is uh, blue category waste and fifth it is white category waste. So what is there in all these categories? Please remember there's a very frequently asked question, not by the examiners, by the students to me, that what about the black category, sir? What about the black category? Black category, please remember, black is no more, uh, It's it was never a part of the environment ministry as well, but black is basically for general municipal waste. So it is for general municipal waste, it is not, an ambit of the Ministry of Forest and Environment to take care uh, for the biomedical waste guidelines. So coming back to the yellow category, what is thrown in the yellow category? Please remember anything which is infectious waste. Infectious could be anatomical, infectious could be animal waste, infectious could be microbiological waste and infectious could be just anything. It could be human parts, it could be sponge, it could be gauze, it could be anything which is solid, which is infectious. And what happens to the red category? What's there in the red category? Please remember in the red category, we have anything which is plastic, anything which is rubber, and anything which is tube. So you can remember PRT, plastic rubber tube. So anything which is plastic rubber tube, like syringes, you have catheters, you have uh, syringes and anything which is made up of plastic we would like to uh, as per the guidelines we'll go in with the red category waste what is there in the blue category the blue category <clears throat> the blue category takes care of all glass so all glass and uh, that's all like all uh, you have petri dishes you have uh, test tubes you have so much of slides in your clinics so all these are in blue category. What is there in white category? White category is basically pertaining to all shops. So all shops and metals are white category. So these are a rough estimate of all the categories that we have. That's all. It was not so big topic uh, so much so the students had hyped it. But anyways, that's all that you get for your exams. Uh, coming next above, coming next more than this. So just a, a quick uh, recap on this. What we can remember is that all anything which is infectious goes to yellow category. And the point to be noted is this yellow category, it is a bag. It is a non-chlorinated bag. It is a non-chlorinated bag. Next important point somebody can ask you is, we all know all, it's all the infectious waste. And uh, this can go for uh, the primary mode of disposal is incineration. It basically goes for incineration. So primarily it goes for incineration. Here couple of questions uh, frequently, not the examiners back again I would say, mostly the students would ask us because of an important doubt that might arise in your mind that can we have deep burial 
for yellow bin or for red bin yes in most of the places in almost all the places where incineration facility is available please remember incineration is the disposal method but in case you are working in a very rural area you're working in a in a tribal area where there is no facility for incineration or there is nothing like no incinerator near um, uh, the health facility in that case is what the doctor or the medical officer is going to do you have to take permission from the ministry of environment and you can go with deep burial so deep burial is a uh, like method which is put into inverted commas and uh, you can remember deep burial is only with a star mark you need to take permission and then only we can uh, go with the deep burial system otherwise it is all uh, otherwise it's all like uh, incineration all the time if we come to the red category please remember all the red things all the plastics rubbers and tubes they go to the red category what do we do how do we dispose of the red category it is disposed of again in bags these are all non chlorinated non chlorinated bags and what is the method of choice for disposal do we incinerate answer is you do not incinerate no incineration except incineration you do whatever you want to do you autoclave them you microwave them you radiation you have hydrolytic radiation you have hydrolytic methods but you do not do incineration because it's a red category it contains plastic rubber tubes and the fumes from an incinerator may be harmful for the air in the area and therefore may work may become as a source of air pollution in the area so we don't do incineration for the red category that's an important mcq somebody might like to ask us uh, beyond that if we talk of these uh, color bins that we have these two are uh, to remind you these are color bins and these are not bags these are puncture proof this is puncture proof this is this could be like made of it's shown here from a cardboard it could be plastic as well these are plastic heavy plastic or these could be cardboards so it could be anything that's not an issue but uh, this white category it is all puncture proof bins so what do we throw if you recall what do we throw in white category if you recall we throw all the sharps and therefore it is a puncture proof bin and in this category we throw all the glass and uh, this goes with glass and it's a color coded plastic cardboard bin how do we dispose of this what's the method of choice for this uh, for glass i think we all understand uh, that how do we dispose of glass in fact if you just uh, recall from your 10 categories if you remember the, which you were being taught in the medical school time that uh, most all the 10 categories which are there these categories were not including any of the glass that means there was no specified category for glass actually so because if there was no specified category of glass while in your uh, clinics or in your hospitals we have maximum number of glass in the hospital like we have slides we have test tubes we have petri dishes we have pipettes we have most of the things are made up of glass and glass if you recall there was no special category please remember glass contributes approximately roughly four percent of the hospital waste of the hospital waste and uh, that's a that's a big chunk of the hospital waste which is four percent and it was uncategorized previously so glass how do we dispose of what do you think it's a the best answer i think everybody must have got it that the glass the best why did we recategorize and give it a definite categorization was because we want to make use of this glass back again we send it to recycle after chemical treatment so you do chemical treatment and you send it for recycling that's the best way to maybe recycle glass so that you don't uh, don't uh, keep on throwing them not because of wasting of 
funds that is one important aspect but more important than that is you are you are bringing people at risk people who are working with garbage people who are working with in uh, salvation people who are working for maybe rack pickers so these people might turn up into risk and probably you might land up into a higher amount of uh, prevalence of uh, maybe blood-borne diseases like hepatitis B, C or maybe HIV also. So these are your important points which you need to take care of. Uh, for the puncture proof bins, for the shops, we all know how do we discard shops. We discard them by shredding and then you recycle them. So you shred them and then you recycle them. That's all for the biomedical waste management. Just to summarize whatever we have done, a quick summary of whatever we have done till now. Please remember yellow bin, we go with infectious waste, bandages, gauze, solid cotton, linen, body fluids, anatomical body parts, placenta. It all goes into the yellow. Red is plastic rubber, syringes and uh, tubes and catheters white bin is all sharps and metals glass bottle slides pipettes test tubes everything it's all blue bin <coughs> a small mcq where do we throw uh, blood bags empty blood bags empty blood bags it's a bag it's a blood it's an empty so it's a plastic thing which contains blood and it's empty. So what do you think you'll throw in? Please remember blood bags are thrown in the yellow bin. Contrary to what you might have been thinking that blood bags are in red bag, in red bin bags, but blood bags, empty blood bags are thrown in the yellow bin. And uh, what do you think similarly for maybe empty urine bags urine bags these are bags these are urine and these are empty so urine is could be infectious as well and these are plastic but these are empty so again contrary to what you might be thinking right now urine bag is not thrown in a yellow bag it goes into the red bin Next is another important MCQ could be like uh, where do you throw maybe metal implants. So it's a metal, it's an implant and again back again that's how the MCQs are contrary to what you might be thinking right now. Metal implants are not thrown in the white bin, they go in the blue bin because of a very important fact that these are when going for recycling just after disinfection you don't want to shred the metal implants and then go for uh, disposal waste disposal methods so that was all for the system and uh, biomedical waste management any questions any queries you have eight six double nine zero one four double zero nine that's a whatsapp number any material you want you're most welcome to ask on that i would suggest you to join our Facebook group that is M-U-K-H M-O-H-I-T Mukmohit's community and medicine discussions so stay tuned and uh, I wish you all this would probably be comprising of my uh, maybe maybe that's a big maybe maybe uh, one of the few of the last lectures before the NEET entrance exam because it's just around the corner. So I wish all my listeners a very, very best of luck. May you just grab your seat, whatever it is, you grab your seat of your choice and you get the college of your choice with the department of your choice and you just score pretty good. So this just last like four or five days, I would also like uh, take this opportunity to maybe address you that uh, these are just four or five days which are remaining and these would determine what we shall be doing for the next couple of years, 40 years or 50 years, which department you will be in. The point I want to bring out here is that uh, 
it's just four five days so make the best use of this time not by studying too much not by banging your head too much not by getting into panic state not by getting into an anger state or getting into a denial state you sh have to have a very balanced system in these four days you have to sleep on time you have to wake up on time you have to study for a for a limited time and you have to eat for a limited time anything which is done in exaggeration might harm your system so it's my sincere request sleep on time eat on time wake up on time and you study in the maximum hours that you can these three four days are going to define whatever you have done whatever you have done you might have done maybe 10 books you might have done one book you might not have done a book but in these three four days whatever you know you should just simply revise that so with that not taking much of your time all the very best thank you so much keep on sharing and do uh, let us know how the result was all the best bye bye